one thing the Lord has been speaking to me this year, especially the past quarter, is going back to the ancient ways. And as we were sitting, and we've been sitting on this for a long time, and she, uh, the things we did before COVID maybe, more outreach, more blessing people, more meetings, ancient ways. And the Lord's always saying to me, go back to the ancient ways. The preachers of old, the letters in the Bible were all warnings to strengthen people for suffering and persecution. How in the Lord's name did the average sermon today become about making people feel good? How did sermons today and preachers today become about how to become a better Christian, how to become a better minister, how to become a bigger congregation, how to get a bigger building, how to get better worship, how to get more miracles, how to get more signs, how to get more prophetic, how to get more garbage. How did the Christian world change? And the Lord keeps saying to me, go back to the ancient ways. The letters were all about encouraging you to be ready to die. To be ready to suffer. To be ready to give up everything you have. This is not what people want to hear, but this is what the Lord wants to teach. The problem when Christians copy and paste the Bible and study verse of the day is they miss the meaning. You cannot get a recipe book and copy and paste different verses or different stages of a recipe and expect to get a good cake. I'm a terrible baker. I cannot follow a recipe to save my life. Danielle is a very good baker because she follows every step of the recipe. When I cook, I just throw it in. Alas, I don't measure. But the Bible is a recipe book. You cannot copy and paste what suits you and suits your sermon and suits the congregation or suits what gives you more numbers. The Lord says in Revelation chapter 2, Write to the angel of the church in Smyrna, Thus says the first and the last, the one who was dead and came to life, I know your affliction and poverty, but you are rich. I know the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. Look, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison to test you, and you will experience affliction for 10 days. Be faithful to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. Let anyone who has ears to hear listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who conquers will never be harmed by the second death. From the seven churches, the town of Smyrna is the only one still as a living, working city. The rest have died. The town of Smyrna back then was a central hub between Rome 
and Judaism. It was a city similar to Ephesus that had many temples and many gods. It was a city where all of the community of the world was welcome. Is this sounding familiar? It was a city where all of the world was welcome. It was a place where Rome ruled, but there was a heavy Jewish community. It's very similar to where we are in Dubai. It is a place where the whole world is welcome. Whether you are Muslim, Jew, Hindu, Buddhist or Christian, you are welcome. You're welcome to practice your faith. Just don't push it on anyone. You can be what you want to be. The world flourishes, wealth flourishes. We're in a very similar place to that town. Who's heard of a man called Polycarp? Ancient history is very important. Polycarp was the first recorded martyr outside of the Bible. As in historically recorded. We have our theories as to how the apostles died. But they're not recorded history. It's beliefs. Rumors passed down. Matthew died in India. Thomas in Ethiopia. Paul in Rome. John in the Greek islands. Etc. Bartholomew was I think skinned alive or cut in half. But Polycarp is the first historical recorded martyr. In. Anyone want to guess? Smyrna. In that city that Jesus was warning about. History records. Not rumor. History. That he was taught. By the apostle John. At the point of his death in 150 AD. He'd walked with the Lord 86 years. You can back do the maths. At this point in time, he had a very small church congregation. And he was hated by the city. Hated by the city. And they wanted to kill him. They wanted to have him uh, martyred. And the governors of the city were looking for him. Where he lived was a small cottage. In the roof. And they caught two Christian slaves. And they tortured them both until one of them told them where he was. So they came to the cottage, found him. Where he then said, please, let me make you a meal. So he got the house to prepare them a meal. He said, please let me pray. Where he then spent two hours praying over the salvation of every single person he'd met in his life. This is history, not rumor. This is you can go find this in a history book. Where he was then led to the auditorium or the, the place where the, the, the things happened. And the senators or the rulers of the town pulled him up and they said to him, You're an old man now. Deny Christ. Curse Jesus. And embrace Lord Caesar. Embrace Rome. Pay homage to Lord Caesar and just burn some incense and you shall live. And he said, why will I deny my king? The king of kings who I've served for 86 years. I will not deny him now. And then. They pleaded with him some more. They said, we'll feed you to the lions. 
unless you curse Jesus and embrace Caesar. He said, bring your lions. I will never deny my king. So they asked the crowd and the crowd said, burn him. Because they can't, at that point in time, the use of wild animals to kill people was not allowed anymore. So they said, burn him. Where the Jewish people ran to the woodworkers to collect every scrap of wood they could. And the Jewish people built the pyre for him. Where they then said, okay, we'll nail you to the pyre. And he said, no need to nail me. I will not run from this fire. One hour of fire now is better than eternity in the fire that will come from the eternal judgment of the Lord. So he wasn't nailed to the, to the pyre. And he was burnt alive. And that's the first recorded martyr in history as a historical record of someone who died for their faith. Christianity, early Christianity was built on a belief and a phrase that Christianity grows on the seeds of the blood of martyrs. The more you kill us as Christians, the more we grow. And that's the belief of the ancient church fathers. When you read ancient church church history, that's what they believed, that's what they taught, it's what they embraced. To die for the Lord was to gain eternity. And it's why Jesus says, Be faithful to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. The one who conquers will never be harmed by the second death. The second death is that eternal fire that will come. That pit reserved for those who reject the Lord. That pit reserved for the devil and the forces of darkness. There's no messing with the Spirit of the Lord. There's no games in the walk with Jesus. It's not about a building. It's not about a congregation. It's not about what you do here on earth. It's about what you do with your life to glorify God. When we sang, all is for your glory... It's not, I've got rich for your glory. It's, I died for your glory. This is the one church that Jesus didn't have any problems with. He didn't come here going, yeah, well, you're doing this good, this good, but you're weak in this. He came and said, I know your affliction and poverty. You're being bullied. You're being harassed. You've given away everything you have. You've done what I've told you to do. You've given away to the poor. You followed me. Yet it's about to get worse. Why do people believe that it's about you? It's about what your ministry is. Or it's about what your job's going to be. Or what finances you're going to be blessed with. It's not in here. That's not the walk of God. The walk with the Lord is death. It's death to self. It's death to life. It's for his glory and your eternal crown. In this time, there was no Christianity. That wasn't a religion. Christianity became a religion after 300 AD. You were Jewish. And you was a Jew who believed Ben Elohim, the Messiah, had come. You were known as a Nazarene. And it's why Jesus says the synagogue of the Jews is from Satan. Because there was no church of Christians and synagogues of Jews. There was one temple, one synagogue, one gathering of those who followed Yahweh. The Jews still believe they have to sacrifice in order to get to Yahweh. We get to Yahweh through Jesus. There was one synagogue. And they're not saying that Jews are from the devil. Heck, no. He's referring to his word in John 8. In John chapter 8. Please 
these be in John chapter 8. If God were your father from verse 32, you would love me because I came from God and I am here. For I didn't come on my own, but he sent me. Why don't you understand what I say? Because you cannot listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he tells a lie, he speaks from his own nature because he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Who among you can convict me of sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? The one who is from God listens to God's words. And that is why you don't listen because you are not from God. So when people believe replacement theology that Jesus is saying Jews are of the devil. It's nonsense. They just don't read God's word. He's saying you are of two people. You are either of God or you're of the devil. The devil lies. The devil manipulates. The devil twists the truth in order to gain his benefit. The devil glorifies himself. The devil is concerned with his kingdom on earth. That's why he tried to tempt it to Jesus. Because he knew if he could make Jesus the son of God fall, he reigns forever. But what did he tempt him with? The world. How much of the church today is about the world? Everything. Everything in the church today is about the world. Getting a bigger ministry. Getting a bigger church building. Getting a better worship leader. Getting better instruments. Getting more, more, more for the church. That's never once what Jesus taught. It's not in here. It's not in here. It's not in here. It's not in here. It's not in the word of God. So why are people so hungry to believe nonsense that's not in the word of God? Because you're not father of God. You're not children of God yet. People that want to believe things outside of here are still focused on serving themselves. And that's the hard truth the church needs to hear. The hard truth about Christianity is if you have been placed in a country that you read the prophecies, we could be in the Old Test, the New Testament ba Babylon. We could be in the final Babylon right now where we are. We've literally got a tower going up to heaven and they're trying to build a second one which is even bigger. We're in a modern day Smyrna, a, a cultural land where everyone is welcome apart from the truth of the gospel. You go around telling the truth of the gospel here, you'll be damned faster than you can say damned. Our heart cry should be to people, stop going to the temples. You're going to go to hell. Muhammad will not save you. You'll go to hell. Your church is fake. You're going to hell. You're not born again. You're going to hell. Do what you want to me. I am going to heaven. I will take whatever the world is going to throw at me. It's what we should be crying out. Come to the Lord. It's what Peter was crying in the book of Acts. Come to the Lord. Receive your salvation. Cast off the nonsense of the world. Cast off the concerns of diarrhea that is this world. Just cast it off. It's all going to fade. But why is it the church is so focused? I say it many times. I don't believe there is a church in Dubai. I put my life on the line that this is the only true church in Dubai. Because the other churches don't want to do what the Bible tells them. They're not concerned about evangelizing other people. They're not concerned about creating a one community. 
It's no. I'm Indian, I go Indian church. Indian church only does Indian. Chinese only does Chinese. The African churches only do African. The South African only do South African. The Filipino only do Filipino. They refuse to work together and they're only concerned about one thing. How many people turn up to my church? It's all pastors care about. There's never once a concern for how many people follow Jesus. Jesus didn't once care how many people followed him. His heart was moved for compassion because of how broken humanity was. I've never once cared how many people turn up to this church. I only ever care for God to turn up. And there have been times when no one's been here and me and Danielle start on our own. And we say, Halas, we just, it's just us then. Then sometimes people turn up late. Well, For you as Christians, if you want to claim the title Christian and you're in this city, Dubai, you have to reflect. Are you here to do God's work or are you here to do your work? There's only ever one answer for life. You're here to do God's work. everything in the book of Revelation is to warn people about the poison that had already infiltrated the church. In life, we have two options. You understand what Jesus said. If you were from God, you'd know the truth. You'd know this. It's option one. You know the truth. You know the word inside out and you don't negotiate on it. So as I was teaching on communion, if Paul is warning about getting drunk and being gluttonous in communion, what does that mean? It's our choice to accept what we're told by people or it's our choice to study deeper what does this mean? And we then go, what I see around me doesn't match this. I choose this. How many times pastors, big pastors with big ministries, for years of me said, Eloy, you should join a church. Why should I join a church? There's no man of God here that, that, that I can follow and respect. Which one do you recommend? Him. He's on his second marriage. His first marriage was while he was a pastor. He left and got a second marriage. Why am I going to follow that? Oh, you don't understand grace. No, I understand the word of God. It says, do not remarry. What next? Jesus says, it's a blessing if you can take to be a eunuch. If you can be a man without wife, that's a blessing. So if your first marriage failed as a pastor, you now get to step into that. But you step down as pastor. Why? Because 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy is so clear. Man of one wife of respect of society but we don't want to accept this so when churches don't want to accept this what does Jesus say they're sons of the devil they're not yet born again they're not yet born of the father they have yet to be truly baptized and repentant of their sin The truth is, in your walk with the Lord, if you are not ready to die, you haven't yet become born again. Or you are, you are still in the process of sanctification. Christian faith was built on the blood of martyrs. The early church was persecuted the people that chose to follow Jesus were cast out of the community. 
Judaism is a community of elect people from birthright with which they keep the inherent blessings of God within themselves. You cannot become a Jew. You are born a Jew. Jews stick with Jews. A Jew getting cast out of that community, forget it. You've lost all the perks. No one does business with you. They won't talk to you. They won't even serve you for money. So the people, and that's why the letters are warning, because people love Jesus so much, they were willing to give away everything in their life. How? Because he was their joy and their delight. When they prayed, the joy that came from the Holy Spirit outdid any suffering the world could inflict on them. So I always say this to people. It's never about what looks good to you, what you want to do, what looks nice. The only thing that matters is what has God told you to do? Because as long as you're doing God's will, it doesn't matter. Because when it gets hard, because it will get hard, because that's what it says. When you start walking with God, the devil is going to test your faith. The devil is going to test your faith at the time before grabbing your eternal salvation. Polycarp had walked faithfully with the Lord for 86 years. If he'd have chosen to deny the Lord then and there, what does Jesus say in his word? If you deny me before man, then I deny you before the Father. Would have been undone. In a snap of rejection of the Lord before man. History states Jesus died the most horrific death of any recorded man in history. Yet he managed to endure it and bless people. History shows there's a book called the Fox's Book of Martyrs. History book, not Christian book. History book that has testimonies and testimonies, hundreds of testimonies. It's an English history book in the British Library going back six, like 500 years old. Filled with testimonies of people that died in the Protestant Reformation that were killed by the Catholic Church. People that refused to be tied to their pyre where they were being burnt, where they hugged it with joy and they'd burned to death without even screaming. Where they would be tortured without screaming. where they'd have the skin burnt off their arms and they'd have the countenance of an angel. This is Christianity. That's what it means to walk with the Lord. To be able to, to declare your faith publicly irrespective of what it costs you. And it's not easy. In my life, it's meant I've lost clients. And when you're in a consultation business, losing one client isn't losing one client. It's losing a reputation across a whole people group. In my life, I've been picked up 9 p.m. at night while I'm in northern Iraq to go preach the gospel. Picked up by a local to be bring, brought to a local's house so I can preach the gospel. On my own, no military escort, nothing, just my wife in prayer. I've shared the gospel with royal family in this very house. Well, that's not what the church wants to do today about code words no don't share with them 
Don't do that. No, you don't have to give away all you have. You just say, Lord, this is yours. Show me how you want to use it and then I'll just do what I want anyway. The one thing I say. When a church is focused on their church building, they're not a church. Because the Bible shows us it's your home. To walk with Christ is about family. It's about honesty. It's about servitude. Laying down your life for others. Why do pastors want to have a church building? Because they don't want to open their house up. Why? Because you can come see all of their sin. You can come walk all over my house and see what we have. Go. When people are part of my church, they get keys to the house. They can come whenever they want. Help yourself to the fridge. Go see. Why do church, churches hide behind buildings? Because they don't want this truth of the sin in their life to be brought up. That's why they hire venues. We all have homes. Use them. Instead, resources are wasted on buildings. Why? Why? It's not in a strategic locations. It's not next to the crown prince's house. It's not next to Abu Dhabi Grand Mosque against in prayer. Like Danielle was like saying this week, why are we located where we are? It's useless for the kids. No one is close to where we are. They're either that side of Dubai or they're near Sharjah. Why are we located here? It's stupid. And it's not even near the metro for church. Why are we here? And I said... Because we've got Buddhist temple there, Hindu temple there, and Jamira One Mosque there. Jamira One Mosque is the mosque where the royal family used to meet. We're right by three strategic strongholds of the three major religions of the UAE. That's why God placed this altar here. Not only are we placed into seed, but we've now got authority over the main area in Dubai. Now really what I say today while you still have riches while you still don't suffer persecution you are still so far behind where you need to get to because Jesus doesn't teach if you get persecuted he says when you get persecuted Jesus doesn't teach if you have to give away all you have he says when you must give away all you have when Jesus says leave the dead to the dead pick up your cross and follow me that doesn't mean hang out doing whatever you want and then you'll follow Jesus later that means today you pick up a heavy cross and you follow Jesus because that's the truth of salvation the truth of salvation is not pleasure in this it's pleasure on your knees it's pleasure in discomfort it's why the letters say count your suffering as joy We're saved by grace in faith so that we can start to do works for the Lord and suffer in joy. The hardest thing in a Christian walk is to put yourself in that position of pain where you have to trust in the Lord. 
when you give away your money, you're in a position of pain. Lord, I need you to provide now. When you dedicate hours to prayer, you're saying, Lord, I need you to energize me during the day. I'm putting myself into a state of no sleep where not even coffee can bring me back to life. You need to give me energy for this workload today. When you fast and you continue in your daily life, Islam, when they fast, they go to bed, they sleep all day, they cheat. Ask as Christians, Jesus, when, when you fast, don't let anyone know you're fasting. Don't even look sad. So when we fast, we continue in life as normal with a smile. And we have to be in a position of faith that Jesus is going to sustain us in that fasting. When we have a desire to share the gospel and we share the gospel in a Muslim country, we stand in faith that we're doing what God wants us to do. And if it leads to our death, who cares? If it leads to prison, who cares? If we have to voice the true gospel, which means we lose business, who cares? Because I'd rather not deny the true faith and die than deny the true faith and spend eternity in fire. So when the Lord says to me, return back to my ancient ways, and you look through church history, and you look through what the Bible says, that in end times there'll be none of faith. He questions, will there even be any of faith when I come back? If the letters were warning about people falling away from faith, 60 years after Jesus died, when the book of Revelations was written, Jesus is warning the churches, hey, you're all slipping. Sort it out. I don't understand why Christians today are so relaxed and content in their lives. It's like they don't understand when Jesus says, get away from me, I didn't know you. I don't care you did miracles. I don't care that you healed the sick. I don't care you did communion. Get away from me. Get away from me to the place of gnashing of teeth, fire and maggots that don't die, you go. That's scary. So for us in this city, we have to stop and analyze and be honest. The American church is damned. That society has entered a level of corruption and sin that either pastors are going to go to prison or they're going to yield. Because they have to voice their opinions now. We can't allow LGBT. We can't allow transsexuals. This is wrong. In Malawi, they petition against abortion. This is good. In America, they allow whatever they want in and they're just staying to themselves. But a time will come where you'll see who the true churches are. So when a church suffers persecution, you'll see the true colors of a church. Are they willing to die for what the faith says or will they yield to the ways of the world? That's why I say there's no true church in Dubai because they yield to Dubai straight away. Let me have a nice building, nice cars, nice watches, nice clothes, nice people groups, make everything sound nice, look nice. Everything is copy and paste, just different skin colors. It's not what the Bible tells us. It says master and slave, eat as one. Different genders, eat as one. Live as one. All becomes one. Commonwealth. That our love for each other shows the world the truth. Then it then says, Be wary, watch out. Wolves will dress as sheep. You must be on your guard. And I see them so many times. Wolves dressed as sheep. 
They come to steal, kill and destroy. So you be aware. You stand and watch. Within a couple of months, you see the truth of Christian colors. People can say the right thing once. They can say the right thing twice. Maybe three times, four times. But the test of time shows their true colors. When you start sitting in a place long enough, you'll see the true colors of people. And that's it. A wolf cannot be like a sheep forever. Why? Because a wolf lives off meat, not grass. The sheep just has to wait, see what you eat. And eventually the truth comes out. Leave it to die. You want to stay running with the sheep? You'll die eventually of starvation because you won't get what you're looking for. And that's the truth. As Christians, you must be aware. You must be aware to the truth of where you're placed, why you're placed. If you are a true Christian, you're here for a reason. The reason you're here is not for you to benefit, it's for God to benefit. If it's not for God to benefit, it's so you can lead others to the benefit you've been given, which is that peace, so that when you're on your knees in pain, you don't feel pain, you just feel the peace of the Lord. And this is the ancient ways. Holiness, righteousness, purification from the world. People living to serve God, to help the sick, to help the brokenhearted. In a city where there are so many depressed people, where people are more concerned about wealth, where they're more concerned about Instagram, when they're more concerned about peace amongst all religions, this is a place where self reigns. Everyone is doing things for their own glory. And that's the problem. That's the shelf. Can you get it? Yeah, I've told them it's open. And that's the problem. And that's the problem. When we're praying before the Lord, it's like Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. Lord, if you can take this cup away from me, please do. But let your will be done. Strengthen me. No one wants to suffer. Me and Daniel say this almost every week. I don't want my house to be this stupid thing. When a pastor said to me, you know, he, he's a 40 year plus pastor, planted hundreds of churches. He said, Are you sure that's God's will for your life? I said, I said to him, do you want to live the life I live? Where I have a full-time job and my money goes to pay for autistic kids therapy, my house is a church, and I haven't had a day off in over three years? Do you think that's something I want to do? He went, did you want to do that? No. So then do you think this is God's will? He went, yeah. Okay, so sh shut your face. Sh but that's the truth. When I pray, it's Lord, not my will. Your will be done. Help me endure what you've placed before me. So when we're praying, yes, we're interceding. Yes, we're petitioning. Yes, we're saying, Lord, show me your will. But the will of God is never for you to have an easy life. It says, Inez prayed, Lord, show us where the harvest is. I don't like the harvest she showed us. <laughs> this is not a good harvest. And she goes, I saw this and this. And I said, oh, is this the person you saw? Yes, this is him. And I showed some other photos of similar men. No, not this one. The other one. No, this one. The other one. I said, oh man. Lord, I don't like this. This is not good. This is bad news for me. Good news for you. Bad news for me. So my prayer has been, Lord, help me be able to do this. Well, that's what we're praying. We don't pray for glorification of us. We pray, Lord, I know I don't want to do this. When we fast, I don't want to fast. I hate fasting. No one likes it. But Lord, strengthen me to do it. 
when you're giving money away to things you don't know Lord please strengthen me to do this when you're sharing with someone random about the truth Lord please I don't want to be embarrassed please strengthen me I don't want to do this but Lord strengthen me as we were speaking about a young man earlier when faced with a decision that can cast you out of, commun- out of community, Lord, I pick you, but please, if there's, there's no other way, then strengthen me through that step of being cast out of a community. Unto death, I will stand by you. And that's when we pray. We're praying to be able to endure until the very end, unto death. Which can be given up your promised son after three only three years raising him it can be giving up your job who knows you never know what God's going to ask for you to endure but you must endure whatever he asks and that's when you then pray Lord give me the ability to endure this burden and guess what he does Jesus was a man. It says in his word that he was tired from preaching and he tried to go away because he was tired. But then more crowds came. So he was in compassion on them. It's in the beginning of John somewhere. And I read it and I was like, Lord, so when I'm tired from the works you've given me, I can say to you, Lord, please give me mercy so that in that fatigue, you'll energize me to do more because he did it and that's the whole point he's our intercessor he's our medium he releases the mercy he releases the spirit he releases the anointing because he did it so when we're tired he preached all day and then prayed all night in a mountain he would have been tired when we're fasting and we're hungry guess what he did 40 days and nights he knows when we're like Lord I have no money guess what he knows because when Peter's big mouth spoke about the temple tax he was like well I don't have uh, there's nothing in here go, go throw a line in there'll be something in the fish's mouth he knows he knows how to he knows when we have no money when your family are going, you're bat crazy, you're bananas, you're talking absolute nonsense. Guess what? That's right, he knows. Because his mother and his brothers were standing outside. When the man came down through the roof, they were outside saying, Jesus, Jesus, come, come, come. Like, come on, Jesus, come. Like, come on, you're crazy, come, come. And he then said, no, my mother and brother and sister are the ones who walk with me, not the ones that I came from. He knows what it's like. Oh, your hometown's saying you're crazy. Your friends are saying you're crazy. Guess what? That's right. He knows. Because he then said when he was in his hometown, no prophet is accepted in their hometown. Even him himself was rejected by his family. His brothers didn't believe until he died. That's why James writes, I am the least worthy of the apostles I'm the last he, he, he recognizes it because he was the brother of Jesus and he didn't believe at the time the letters the gospel show they thought they were crazy they didn't believe him so he knows when you voice the truth to a church and they slam you and they call you crazy and they say you're a Pharisee they say you don't know they say you're from the devil guess what? he knows because that's what he went through the people that were meant to know him the most were the ones that rejected him he knows so when he says what happens to the master will happen to the slave we must look to what happened to him Because that's what should happen to us. 
When Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the light. If he is the way, guess what? You follow him. You follow his way. So if Ronnie teaches us how to get to Baniaz, he says, I am showing you the way to Baniaz. We go the way she goes. I don't go, Sheikh Zayed's much faster. I'm going to get in my car and drive down Sheikh Zayed, get there much faster. No, Ronnie showed us the way. This is the way to Baniaz. This is the only way to Baniaz. That's what Jesus says. I am the only way to God the Father. So if Ronnie goes, I am the only, I'm showing you the only way to get to Baniaz. If we choose not to walk that way, it's our choice. So when Jesus says, when Ronnie says, I am the way to Baniaz, you go from here, you get on bus number seven, and you go that way, and then from there you can walk on the metro. Am I right? Am I close? Close. Good. Then, okay. Bus number seven, get off at this stop on the metro. Boom, Baniaz, I've got there. That wasn't fun. Metro was tough. The bus was rude. Didn't get a seat. That sucked. But that's the way she does. I've gone the way. So when Jesus says you'll be rejected, you'll suffer, you'll be persecuted, you won't have anywhere to lay your head, you won't have anywhere to call home, you, your family will be persecuted, your community will persecute you. Guess what? That's the way you have to walk. It's the only way to walk. Because that's what he teaches. If people believe this today, it will be a very different world. And that's why I will say there's no true church in Dubai. Because when I look at my life, I go, Lord, why haven't you led us to a church? If there was a church here, why haven't you brought us there? Because Lord knows we're hungry. I don't want to do this. I just want to find somewhere I can make coffee. It's what I've always said, Lord, I just want to make coffee in your church. So let me be that guy that gets to make people coffee and put chairs away. It's all I've ever wanted to do. I find it very satisfying. It's very satisfying. You get straight lines. It's satisfying. It's fun. And I said, Lord, why just let us join a church? Let us be the ones that get to sit down and weep and pray and intercede. But the churches here don't teach death. They won't teach you suffering. The pastors won't be an example to you. They don't test apostles. They don't test evangelists. They don't test prophecy. It's just free for all. Anyone can make a story up. Anyone can make a story up. I could have made up every single story about the royal families, about Iraq, I could make it all up and be in a church building and make it all up and no one will know. But you can come in my house and see the fruits of what we do. And that's why Jesus says test. That's why the letters warn, test, test, test. Look, observe, consistency, consistency. So when you look today and you leave today, I want to go back into worship with Danielle. Analyze your walk and the messages you've listened. I, I say this almost every week now. What you choose to listen to is your choice. How you choose to pray is your choice. How you choose to live your life is your choice. Only you will account to God for your choices. You know, I heard a, a, a man preaching and he said, I have many people that come and try and offer to do things in my church this way, that way. And I go, yeah, that's wonderful. I'm not going to say that's not from God. But that's not what God's told me. God's told me to do church this way and that's how I'm doing it. Because I'm the one who's going to account to God for my church. Not you. Not Inez. Not Danielle. Me. 
And it's the same thing for your walks. It's you will account to God for what you do. So you better be confident in your thus saith the Lord. Because that's the most important thing. And if you're thus say, if the Lord says you're going to be wealthy, prosperous, have a big ministry, many people are going to follow you, you're going to have all these miracle signs and wonders, I would go straight to deliverance. Go find a baptismal pool, repent, dive in and stay in until you feel the presence of God lift you up. Because that's not what the Bible teaches us. Horrible but sad truth. So as we go back into prayer and worship, analyze, sit, the messages you've watched. And if you sit there and you go, when I look at that, he's right. What Eloy's saying is right. I just see self-glorification. I just see them focused on themselves. I, I see them only preaching things that make me go, oh, that's nice. I am blessed today. Hashtag NFPP 7 a.m. prayers. Boom. But it's true. You want to believe that nonsense? Great. Just don't waste. Don't come here. Don't waste my tea and biscuits. Well, you sit and you go, if this is all about self-glorification, and then because of my self-glorification, we can say, yeah, look what my God did for me. That's not the gospel. If you're sitting there going, they're preaching holiness, righteousness, purity. Okay, we're doing good. Let me keep that stuff in. Because what he's saying is right. If the only church in the book of Revelation was in a city that's very similar to where I am right now. And the only church that was doing good was the afflicted and poor. And then they were then therefore rich in spirit. And that's not my life. I have a bigger problem. So you sit and you reflect and you go, it's time to clean my junk. Eloy's right. There are many wolves. The time is short. The world is a mess. What am I doing with my life? Am I ready to die? No. I'm still scared of death. Why? We're not scared of death anymore. Oh, death, you've lost your sting. As Paul writes, it's hard. You know, he, he, I'm paraphrasing, he says, if I could die, I want to die, but I know I need to live in order to teach you, but my blessing is to die, because when I die, I'm instantly with Jesus. So why are we scared of death? But if these things still plague you, and your focus is life, your focus is still self, shift, cleanse, because you're the one who's in control of what you see, what you hear. You're in charge of what cup you drink from. You cannot drink from two. So if you're there going, Ech, this man is talking nonsense, check your cup. If you're there going, this man's talking truth, go, hmm, it's time to clean away. Because it is. Every week we're cleaning, we're cleaning, we're cleaning. Even this morning. I'm doing my God time and I'm in a world of pain because I've realized the new season God's taking me in and I'm, I'm having to put myself in difficulty to really touch God. And then we're sharing with Inez about Danielle's having some stuff with God and I said, and God said to me, he goes, you're the father, you're the husband, you're the representative of me. You represent me to her. If she is struggling to get a connection to me, guess where it starts me so for me as the representative of jesus to my wife you know i've been very focused on the kid from the kid trying to work from trying to work painting the rooms and i haven't even trained myself for two weeks and i said to her i'm sorry i'm repenting to you because i've not been affectionate to you i've not been saying i love you i've not been hugging you i've not been spending time with you i can't remember the last time we went on a date i actually can't remember Help me out. When was the last time? She can't even remember. It's been that long. I said, if, if I'm not being a representative of affection to her, how am I going to, how can we be, how can she be expecting God to? I'm the first example. So I said, sorry, I repented on it. 
every week God's got junk to clear in our lives because if we were perfect if we were perfect we would be Jesus we all sin we all fall short of the glory of God and to believe anything but that is to call God a liar 1 John so you take this time now as Danielle leaves us in devotional just to sit with God and be like Lord this was, this was pretty harsh today this was really quite harsh and I, what do I need to clean what do I need to clear out what do I need to change how can I start to suffer for you because your word says I will be su- suffering and persecution will come I'm not there yet ready to die that's fine that's fine history shows men and women died for Christ so it's not like oh well because you're a woman you get to get away from that we all must suffer for Christ and you sit and you go Lord I'm not suffering yet that's why Paul says if the gospel of Christ proves to be nonsense how much stupider do I look to the world if your life doesn't look stupid to the world you have a problem If you don't look like a fool to the world, you have a problem. If your life doesn't look like a fool to religious people, you have a problem. You must live like a fool. That's what Paul shows. You must live in a way that the world goes, you are crazy. You must look crazy for the Lord. You can die any minute. There's a girl we know. Stop playing. There's a girl we know. We tried to lead her to the Lord. Janine. Hmm? Jeline. Three years ago, she was depressed, anxious. She had a boyfriend. She came. She encountered the truth of Jesus. She had deliverance from depression and anxiety and was filled with joy. She did not want to get rid of the boyfriend. So she fell out of fellowship. Went to believing new age. God loves me. I do what I want. Hyper grace gospel that's her life still with boyfriend and then one day she's crossing the road dead hit by a car gone You never know when your time of the Lord is coming. It's why he says, it comes like a thief in the night. Mm. 